So real quick, if y'all have been a viewer of my live for the last three years, I have mentioned a song that I recorded at the age of 16 that I am extremely embarrassed of. I just went to my mom's house and I did a project with her and she actually found the song. If you guys want to go hear that song that I recorded sounding a mess, I'll put the link of the video in the top comment. All right, y'all, let's get to this video. All right. Everybody can type at least one angry comment because I know y'all are upset because I said this was going to be a Sarah Vaughn video. But I'm gonna be real with you. I push Sarah onto the side because her story will be a straight bio story. Won't really have much tea. And this is cool. We all like bio stories, but baby, you know we loves the tea. And I'm gonna serve y'all up a batch right now with this doggone screaming Jay Hawkins story. We'll get to it after this disclaimer. The whole video is hearsay, rumor, and gossip that I find on TV, online, magazine, books, and I ball it all up and I tell you guys a story. It's all for entertainment purposes only. Now let's get to it. Jalacy J. Hawkins, AKA Screaming J. Hawkins, was born on July the 18th, 1929 in Cleveland, Ohio. His mother's name was Marie Hawkins and his father's name was missing in action because let Screaming Jay tell the story, his mother Marie was a hoe. And if you already saying whoo cha, you need to because this story is going to get messy quick. Screaming Jay Hawkins said his hoeish mama Marie was always somewhere looking for an orgasm. And that's what she was searching for on the night that she went home with a man from Arabia. Screaming Jay said his mama had an Arabian night and she did get her big O, but she also got pregnant. And of course, this baby she was pregnant with was him. Well, per Screaming Jay, when Marie got pregnant, she was living in the state of Washington. And for some reason, when the people in the state of Washington found out Marie was pregnant, a group of people gathered around her and started busting her upside the head with stones. They were uh, slapping her, they were kicking her, and in the midst of all of this bust upside the headness, a uh, bus magically appeared on the corner. Marie was able to break away from the crowd and she ran to the bus and when she got on the bus she told the bus driver take me to Cleveland Ohio the bus driver says okay they head to Cleveland and when they pull up in Cleveland the first building that they pass is an orphanage Marie shouts stop the bus and she runs into the orphanage and she gives birth there when her baby, Screaming Jay Hawkins, is born, she tells the orphanage owner, here, this baby is yours now. And Marie walks out the door without looking back at her baby at all. She doesn't even give the little baby a kiss on the forehead. Now, do you see how outlandish Jalacy, aka Screaming Jay Hawkins, could be about his life? Take this into consideration as we go through the rest of this video, because not only do I not know what was true or false, uh, Screaming Jay Hawkins didn't even know what was true or false. He just opened his mouth and just said things. But I can tell you what others said, especially regarding his birth story and his mother. Family members say in reality, when Marie got pregnant with Screaming Jay, uh, it was a possibility that she did not know who his father was, but she gave him up to an orphanage because she was poor. You know, she had no money to take care of him. And family members also said that Marie didn't just walk out like, bye, y'all take care of him. Uh, no, they said that this decision bothered Marie for the rest of her life. Allegedly, she would cry and beg her son's forgiveness, but uh, Screaming Jay would not grant her forgiveness because he did not understand why his mother gave him up, especially when she ended up having children after him and keeping those children. And so allegedly, his mother cried and begged his forgiveness all the way up to her death. And even after her death, Screaming Jay didn't even go to her funeral. And I didn't mean for this story to get this heavy this quick, but yeah, to move on though, outside of Screaming Jay being raised in an orphanage, there is not much else that's known about his younger childhood day. It is known though that at the age of 13, 14, 15, or 16, depending on the source, um, he did use a fake ID and enter the military. This was while America was at war in World War II, and according to Screaming Jay Hawkins, this was one of the most terrible periods of his life. He said that he was with his platoon and they were surrounded by Japanese soldiers, and these Japanese soldiers took them captive. 
And per Screaming Jay, immediately these people started torturing them, but he received the worst torture of all. Because for some reason, the Japanese captors developed a fascination for booty. And not just booty, his booty. Screaming Jay said it was unbearable, honey. Said that they took several knives and stuck him in the booty about 20 times a day. Just yeah, 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 slicing away. Baby, this man said that by the time the US forces came in to rescue him in his platoon, he barely had any booty left. And speaking of the U.S. rescuers, when they came and told Screaming Jay, you know, okay, you're safe, let's get out of here, he was so angry about what happened to his buttocks, he told the uh, U.S. soldiers that he wasn't going anywhere until he got his payback. That's when Screaming Jay took the U.S. soldier's gun, snuck up behind the Japanese leader and bust him in the back of the head, took a grenade, baby, and stuffed it in the man's mouth and then pulled the plug. Again, this is Screaming Jay's story. He told it to everybody. However, family says, in reality, Screaming Jay Hawkins did go to the military. However, he never saw combat. In fact, he was in there playing the piano and singing and uh, cleaning bathrooms and stuff. And while we are on the subject of the real story of Screaming Jay Hawkins' life, uh, it was also around this age, about 16, 17 years old, that he began a serious relationship with the first love of his life. And her name was Anna Mae Vernon. This was a beautiful girl that he'd known since elementary school. Their relationship became very deep and very intimate. And then in the year 1949, they were married. And Anna Mae thought that Screaming Jay was going to be content just being a husband and a father, but she found out soon that he had bigger dreams. He actually wanted to sing. Now, where some women may have trampled on their husband's dreams and demanded that they live a basic life, you know, and take care of their family, Anna Mae didn't do any of that. She was in full support of her husband. As a matter of fact, she played the piano while uh, Screaming Jay wrote some of his first songs. These songs were opera songs. Child, Jay would go perform his opera at the local theaters and have everybody sitting up there with their hair blue back. Looking around, talking about some, I didn't like that at all. And it was because while Screaming Jay was not terrible, he really didn't have a true opera singer's voice. And so his opera career really didn't go anywhere, but uh, Screaming Jay was cool with that because he was actually doing something else on the side that he was good at, and that was boxing. People don't know this, but Screaming Jay Hawkins was said to be knocking folks out left and right on the canvas. But that wasn't his true passion. He wanted to sing. And so since opera didn't work out, Screaming Jay figured, you know, I'll just sing blue. And he ended up meeting a man that would help him realize his dreams as a singer. And this guy's name was Tiny Grind. He made Screaming Jay Hawkins a member of his personal band. So things were going really good with Tiny Grimes, but Screaming Jay Hawkins still wanted to be his own solo star. Luckily, Tiny Grimes liked him enough where he didn't have a problem with it. As a matter of fact, he told Screaming Jay that he would do things to help him go solo. But there was one favor that Tiny Grimes probably wish that he left off. So the story says that Tiny Grimes ends up booking a recording session at uh, Atlantic Records for his band. And while he's there, he asks if this guy, this member of his band, aka Screaming Jay, can also record some solo music. And I met Ergaton. I hope that's how you say his name. Anyway, he is a legendary producer that worked with Atlantic. He tells Tiny Grimes, cool, that's fine. We'll also record this guy, Screaming Jay. So Screaming Jay gets into the booth and he starts screaming and yelling just like he always does. Well, apparently, I met Erdogan is not feeling this. And so he tells Screaming Jay Hawkins, you know, man, you know, can you tone it down a little bit? Can you just not scream so much? As a matter of fact, I got it. I got it. How about you sing the song more like Fats Domino with town? Screaming Jay goes ballistic. Fats Domino? What you got me in here recording it for the end? You know I'm Screaming Jay Hawkins. That's the way I sing. Screaming Jay gets so worked up that he leaves the booth and he goes face to face with Ahmed. And so Ahmed is like, whoa there, buddy. You know, calm down. Calm down. We don't need any trouble. Baby, the folks say Screaming Jay Hawkins punched that man in the face. Then pulled off his belt and started trying to whip this man. Tiny Grimes and everybody else in the studio is like, oh my God. 
And most people felt like, you know, it was pretty much over. I mean, you tried to give one of the best producers in music history a whooping with your belt. But it was not over. In fact, two things happened in Screaming Jay's life that makes everything fall into place. The first thing that happens is that he gets signed with OK Records. And the second thing that happened, he meets Alan Freed, the famous bad boy DJ that used to play black songs on white people's radio station. When Alan Freed met Screaming Jay Hawkins, he told Screaming Jay Hawkins that anytime he made a record, just bring it to him and he would make sure he played the record constantly. And this is just what Screaming Jay Hawkins needed because there was a night that was coming up that would change the course of history for him. This night in question has caused a lot of speculation over the years. Some people say magic was at play. Some folks feel like witchcraft was at play. Other folks feel like the only spirits that were in the room were the spirits that come out of liquor bottles. Whatever it was that was going on, on that night in the year 1954, Screaming Jay Hawkins went to the studio and made a song that people would never forget. And this song was called, I Put a Spell on You. <laughs> and when people first heard that, doom, 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 in the beginning of the song, they did not know what was going on. They were scared, but they were thrilled. This man comes blasting over the radio and he's saying, I put a spell on you because you're mine. Watch the things you do. <laughs> I <learned. laughs> Now y'all know I had to have a little fun. But anyways, the song sounded like witchcraft. It sounded like ghosts and goblins and ghouls, but you still wanted to listen to every word. In other words, it was a magnificent, exhilarating experience, especially for the young folks. But them older folks, oh baby, they were not happening. They said Screaming Jay Hawkins was possessed, doing all that crazy laughing. They accused him of being a cannibal, said he practiced dark arts and deviltry, you know, and ooga booga 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 booga. In fact, I Put a Spell on You was one of the only songs that outsold some of the songs on the charts, but didn't make the charts. And this is a very clear example of how the establishment or the ruling class in the music industry uh, picked and chose. You know, I don't know if they do it today, but back then it was picking and choosing. They wanted to bury Screaming Jay Hawkins and his doggone song, but it was just too late. I mean, the song was just too popular. And then when Screaming Jay Hawkins started to do his live shows, there was really nothing they could do because people were lined up paying money to see this man perform what they thought was a voodoo on the stage. Screaming Jay comes out with his cape on, you know, sometimes he's wearing all black. You know, he has skulls all on his cane and smoke going everywhere. The man looked like he was casting spells and the young public loved it. So much so that even though Screaming Jay Hawkins could not get on the charts, movies and television still came calling for him. And we will talk a little bit more about Screaming Jay Hawkins' career as we go along. But right now, we've made it to the point where he's famous. So y'all know exactly what time it is. Say it with me now. It's time to get to the scandal, child. The scandal. And Screaming Jay Hawkins is Screaming Jay Hawkins. So this video is definitely not going to be in a storytelling format. It's more going to be in a list format. Uh, kind of like James Brown. The real messy one. Let's get to the first rumor. And this is a story about Screaming Jay Hawkins and the group The Drifter. Now we've already discussed a little bit about Screaming Jay Hawkins performing his live shows. But one of the things I think I didn't mention was that sometimes he would come up out of a casket. Well, he was going to do this bit on a show where he was performing performing on the same bill as the drifter. And while they're all backstage and talking, some of the drifters are like, you know, hey man, how do you pull off that casket trick? You know, how does that work? And Screaming Jay says, well, when I'm about to go on stage, I'll let you guys know and you guys can ship me in there and I can show you how it works. So the time comes for Screaming Jay Hawkins to go out on stage and perform. And so he gets the drifters. He lies down in his casket. And there was some kind of latch or lever or something like that uh, to where the casket wouldn't shut all the way. Well, unfortunately for Screaming Jay Hawkins, the drifters did it wrong. And so the casket did indeed shut all the way. He was locked in. So Screaming Jay Hawkins is in his casket and he is ready to perform and he starts to hear the music of his song. After the music plays where it needs to get to, he hears the the curtains open up and he tries to come up out of his casket like usual. Well, of course, he doesn't come out of the casket because the casket is locked tight. Now, at first, Screaming Jay did not panic because he felt like once he missed his cue 
for sure somebody was going to uh, realize something was wrong and then they would come and open the casket for him. Well, that is not what the musicians did. They simply thought that Screaming Jay Hawkins had missed his cue and so they started to loop the intro again. It gets to the part where Screaming Jay needs to get out. Again, there is no Screaming Jay. The musicians start to loop the intro again. And this is a long behind intro. So by now, Screaming Jay Hawkins is panicking because he had heard the rumor that you only have three minutes inside of the casket before you pass away due to uh, suffocation. So baby, he is punching, kicking, hollering, I mean in there losing his doggone mind. And finally, the casket falls off of its stand and hits the floor and shatters everywhere. The musicians are looking confused and the audience are just eager to see Screaming Jay Hawkins. They just feel like this is all a part of the show. Child, they didn't see Screaming Jay Hawkins, but what they did see was a booty with several boo-boo stains on top of some long legs running towards the back of the stage. Allegedly, Screaming Jay Hawkins had become so frightened that he messed himself in that casket. But get this though, he wasn't running backstage to clean himself up. Gossip claims that Screaming Jay Hawkins got out of that casket and started running straight towards the drifters dressing room baby said he burst in the door and knocked them out one by one the folks even say that ben e king was laid out on the floor knocked out cold because ben e king was a part of the drifters at this time and maybe this is why ben e king's mouth always twisted up to the side when he sang baby maybe screaming jay hawkins had knocked his lip up speaking of knockouts this was not the only fist fight that uh screaming jay hawkins had while he was in the music industry uh gossip claims that he tried to fight a lot of people or he did fight a lot of people but you'd rather have him try to knock you out then tried to shoot you. Story says that one show he booked was with an elderly club owner that absolutely loved Screaming Jay Hawkins. This old man offered top money for Screaming Jay Hawkins to come to his club. Well, Screaming Jay Hawkins arrives at the club and the old man tries to say something to him. Baby, Screaming Jay Hawkins just walks right past the old man, just ignores him like he's not even there. And the old man is a little disappointed, but you know, he's like cool. He doesn't want to think negatively about his idol. He's just like, you know, I'll let him go to the dressing room and I'll come visit him later. He lets about 30 to 45 minutes pass and then he comes to the dressing room door. The old man knocks on the door and baby, that door opens and all that old man had fell out because he was staring down the barrel of a gun. Why you got my name misspelled on your sign? What stunt you trying to pull, old man? Don't you know I'm screaming Jay Hawkins and not screaming Jay Hawkins? Child, that old man was so doggone scared. He was just shaking and quivering and then just went hobbling down the hallway uh, going to go fix that doggone sign. And some people didn't even have to do anything wrong to him to get gunplay. Gossip claims he went over to Europe for a gig and when he got there, his team decided to visit the busy downtown, you know, to go drive around and sightsee pretty much. So they get down there and they're just driving and Screaming Jay Hawkins is in the back seat and he decides to kind of roll down the window and stick his head out. Well, eventually somebody in whatever city they're in recognizes him and they're like, Ahoy, look, there's the Screaming Jay Hawkins. Everybody gather around. There's the Screaming Jay <laughs> Shaw screaming Jay Hawkins lit that street up. By the time he was done, that busy street was empty like a doggone western movie. Them folks had dashed and ran into all kind of stores and hotels. And Screaming Jay's team are just losing their mind. You know, they're trying to skirt up out of there. They're asking him what the F is wrong with him. And he's just laughing his head off because he opens the gun and he shows them that he's shooting blank. And thank goodness they were blanks because his tail probably would have went to jail for a long doggone time pulling some mess like that. Check out this other story about him pulling out a doggone gun on somebody. This story was alleged to involve one of his daughters because rumor has it one of his daughters had become an adult but she had uh, gotten with an abusive man. Well, one day he is giving her the works. I mean, he's just busting the head left to right. And then suddenly their whole front door comes down and Screaming Jay Hawk and steps in the doggone room like a superhero with his gun raised. He points it directly at the abusive boyfriend's head and he tells him, you lay your MF and hands on my GD daughter again, it's gonna be your ass, boy. You hear me, boy? 
Do you hear me, boy? Allegedly, he kept screaming, do you hear me, until the boyfriend is yelling at the top of his lungs, yes, sir, you know, yes, sir, I hear you, I'm sorry, sir. Well, once the guy says this, I guess this is good enough for screaming Jay Hawkins because he just kind of pulls his gun back, takes two steps backwards out of the door and then runs off into the night. And his daughter and the boyfriend are both kind of stunned, but when the boyfriend realizes that Screaming Jay Hawkins is gone, he just proceeds to start busting the daughter upside the head again. So that was weird. But what makes it even more weird is that Screaming Jay Hawkins would bust down the door like Superman for his daughter being abused, but he also was abusing women. Gossip claims that almost every woman that he had been with, he had bust them upside the head at least once. And there were hundreds of women, if not thousands of women, because he certainly didn't stay with his first wife, Anna Mae Vernon. Let me tell you about that. So the folks say when Screaming Jay Hawkins first started to sing with Tiny Grimes, he would go and perform his gigs on the weekends and then he would be back with his family on the weekday. Well, one day Screaming Jay Hawkins comes back from on the road and then he starts saying that he needs to go to the store. Nobody understands what he needs because there are groceries in the house, but Screaming Jay Hawkins is just adamant. So he pulls out, goes to the store and straight up became a missing person. Nobody knows where this man is. Uh, weeks after weeks after weeks pass, his wife Anna Mae is worried, the children are crying, but after a few months had gone by and they'd seen Screaming Jay Hawkins in the newspaper, sometimes pictured with several girlfriends, uh, Anna Mae and the children understood that he'd abandoned them. Well, they carry on with life as best they can and then almost two years to the day that Screaming Jay Hawkins left them, he pulls back up and walks in the house all regular with a grocery bag in his arm. When he gets in the house, Anna Mae and the children are in hysterics. You know, they are crying. They're also angry. They want to know what happened. Screaming Jay Hawkins looking around confused like he don't know what nobody's talking about. I mean, he is really standing there looking at these people like, you know, I told y'all I was going to the store. You know, dang, I told y'all I was going to be right back. I guess he was stuck in a time loop or something. I guess that's what he was trying to play it as. Well, Gossip claims that on that night, everything settles down. You know, the children forgive their father. Anna Mae forgives her husband. And then the next day when he wakes up, he throws a barbecue. You know, he invites all the neighbors over. He uh, buys the neighborhood kids ice cream cones. It is a fun time for everybody. Everybody is just happy that Screaming Jay Hawkins is back home. Home. And they wake up the next morning and Screaming Jay Hawkins is gone again. This time, his children do not see him for another 20 years. I mean, ridiculousness. You know what I'm saying? Just clown show type stuff. Even with all of this going on though, it still took until the year of 1970 for Anna Mae to end up divorcing uh, Screaming Jay Hawkins. He never divorced her. She had to file and complete the divorce. And because they didn't divorce until the year 1970, this meant when Screaming Jay Hawkins married his second wife, he committed bigamy. But before we get to her, we have other women to get to. The first lady's name is Barbara Blessing game and allegedly she was one of the girlfriends that his wife Anna Mae and his kids saw in the newspaper hugged up kissing with. Well what Anna Mae didn't know at the time was not only was Barbara Blasting game uh, Screaming Jay Hawkins girlfriend he had actually proposed to her and she was his fiance but because Screaming Jay Hawkins ended up cheating on her Barbara ended up calling off the engagement and actually leaving him alone. Well rumor has it that Screaming Jay Hawkins got to following Barbara wherever she went Got to showing up at her house, crying, rolling all over the floor, talking about how he loved her and he missed her. And he ends up doing this so much that Barbara falls for it. You know, she's like, okay, we can give this another chance. When they get back together, Screaming Jay Hawkins is a changing man. He does not cheat on her. He's very attentive. You know, he takes her to fine places. Well, now Barbara tells Screaming Jay that, you know, she's so in love that she's actually ready to get married again. And Gossip claims that's when Screaming Jay told her, her, I don't want to marry you. I don't want this no more. And Barbara is like, what the F do you mean? You don't want this no more. Like I had left you and you begged for me back. Why are you doing this? Because you left me and nobody leaves me. I leave them.
Baby took off with his nose in the air and switched on out of the room. Let's move on to another woman that was in his life. And this lady's name was Lee Angel. And yes, this is the same Lee Angel who was laid up with Buddy Holly and Little Richard in the Little Richard video. Matter of fact, gossip claims that Lee Angel actually left Little Richard to go be with Screaming Jay Hawkins. And she was in love with Screaming Jay Hawkins. She was hooked. And Screaming Jay Hawkins also told Lee Angel that he was hooked and that he wanted to marry her. But instead of marrying her, what he did was cheat on her with a 15 year old girl. Well, this was against the law, just like it is today. So Screaming Jay Hawkins actually went to jail for this. Now, luckily for him, he did not stay in jail long, but yes, he went. After he got out, guess who was still there waiting for him? Lee Angel. Allegedly, he was very apologetic. He professed his love for her and he told her, this is the weekend right now, but on Monday when the courthouse doors open, we will be there and we will go get married. Well, Monday morning comes around and Screaming Jay Hawkins is on the airplane headed to Miami and Lee Angel is still at the hotel in Los Angeles scratching her head wondering what the heck happened. So rumor has it Screaming Jay Hawkins gets to Miami and he has a gig there. And another person performing on this same show was a singer who was a newcomer and that was 18 year old Pat Newborn. Well, gossip claims that Pat opens the show and then after she's done and is walking off stage, all of the smoke starts to go everywhere because Screaming Jay Hawkins is about to make his entrance on the stage. Well, these smoke machines are just like magical to Pat. You know, she has not seen anything like this and so she's looking and studying the smoke machine but there's a fuse box right next to it. Well she touches something on the fuse box and the whole thing blows up in her face. Not only was Pat's hair blue back her skin was blue back too but it was one person in the room that liked that Skeletor chic because gossip claims that when she turned around screaming Jay Hawkins fell in love honey and by the time she healed they were a couple. In fact screaming Jay Hawkins actually put a huge diamond ring on Pat's finger and made her his new fiance. Now Pat Newborn was only 18 and a famous singer treating her like this, oh baby she didn't stand a chance. This girl would do anything and everything that Screamin' Jay Hawkins asked her to do. Baby, that man had Pat doing traceums. Allegedly, he had her giving juicy fruit up to random men. Folks say that he took her to Hawaii and really set her out there. The folks say that he had a knack for the white women who lived on the uh, Hawaiian island. And so he would send Pat to kind of befriend these white women and bring them back to the hotel room, he would have these people putting on a show for him. So Screaming Jay Hawkins really had his fun with uh, this Pat Newborn, but he really didn't understand how all of this stuff was messing this girl's mind up until he ended up getting bored of her. Gossip claimed that while they were living in Hawaii, Screaming Jay Hawkins had been cheating on Pat Newborn the whole time and he met a woman that I think was from Hawaii and her name was Virginia AKA Jenny Sabalona. Jenny would rub and wash Screaming Jay's feet. You know, she would clip his toenails, clip his nail, wash his back, be his pillow for him when he slept. Baby, the woman probably even held the stuff while the man went to pee. She was everything he wanted. And so very soon after he started cheating with her, he wanted to marry her. Well, now he has to break it off with Pat Newborn. And so one day he walks into their apartment or hotel room and just starts packing up his bags. And Pat is kind of sitting there like, you know, daddy, where you going? Well, Pat, I'm in love now. And I'm talking about real love, not none of this ghetto raggedy BS love I got with you. So. I'm sorry, but I'm done with you. So when Screamin' Jay Hawkins picked up his back and tried to walk out the door, a uh, Pat saw Red and she grabbed a knife and she went and stabbed him in the back. And I guess Screamin' Jay Hawkins really did know some voodoo or witchcraft or something, child, because uh, Gossip claims that instead of him falling down, he actually got very, very, puffed up and angry and kind of lunged at Pat, you know, and started trying to sling her all around the room and stuff. And uh, the folks say Pat ran out the front door and Screaming Jay Hawkins even chased her down the street until he ended up collapsing. And Screaming Jay Hawkins was taken to the hospital where he stayed for a while, but when he left the hospital, he did end up getting married to his new fiance, Jenny. And Jenny may have actually been the best wife for Screaming Jay Hawkins because uh, she did everything he said 
And also, um, I think he stayed with her the longest. I do know that by the time the 1970s came around, he was still with her. And most people maybe felt like she stayed around for the money, but shoot, what money? By the 1970s, his career was just going down, down, down. He would basically made a lot of enemies and cheated a lot of people. He would fuss with club owners that if they wanted to book him, they needed to pay him the same amount that they would pay James Brown. And then also his shows were sometimes full of shenanigans. There was one show that he was doing where his fuse box blew up in his face. The folks say he turned around to the audience looking just like this, except he didn't have no eyebrows, no mustache, and no uh, eyelashes. And then there was a gig he did when singer Escurita showed up at the club to watch him. Well, when Screaming Jay Hawkins spots Escurita out in the audience, he stops the show and is basically like, you know, hey man, you owe me $50 from like 20 years ago. And Escurita is like, hey, I don't owe you nothing. And they are arguing back and forth until finally, I think it was Escurita was like, you know, well, if you want to see me, then you need to step outside. So they get outside. Escurita is out there with a broken beer bottle swinging in and slashing it everywhere and uh, Screamin' Jay Hawkins has a switchblade. They are actually cutting each other, cutting each other on the arms. I think somebody got cut across the face. They go at it for maybe two minutes until Screamin' Jay Hawkins, I guess, remembers that he used to be a boxer and then comes with a right hook and knock Escurita out cold in the middle of the street. These men are both in their 50s, probably even in their 60s by this time. And then let me tell you this. This baby, this is one of the most disturbing stories of all. So rumor has it that by the time the 1980s get here, Freeman J. Hawkins and Jenny are living in Los Angeles, I believe. Well, some agents who want to work with Screaming J. Hawkins to maybe get his career back on track come over to his hotel room. And while they are there, Screaming J. Hawkins' cat comes walking through. Screaming J. Hawkins picks up his cat and he starts to pet her. And he's like, you know, don't worry about her. She's in heat. One thing about it, I ain't letting my cat get next to no male cat. But see, when they in this kind of heat, they need some kind of relief. You know, the female cats need something. Finger catnip or cat dip cat tip, whatever pun you want to use. This is YouTube, so I cannot say exactly what he did with his finger. Let's just say that he felt like he needed to use his finger to relieve his cat. And when he did it, you could hear a pin drop in the room. And Screaming Jay Hawkins is just like, you know what? You know, how else are you supposed to relieve a cat in heat? I mean, how else do y'all do it? To move on, by the late 1980s, Jenny had had enough of her husband's behavior. And so she ended up leaving. Almost about one or two months after Jenny ended up divorcing him and leaving him, uh, Screaming Jay Hawkins got married again. This time to a young black girl named Cassie. Allegedly, he put this woman through hell for real. And I think it was because he was so frustrated about his career that he would just take it out on her. I mean, uh, in the book I was reading, there were several several witnesses that say that they saw Cassie with busted lips, black eyes, and I guess maybe they lasted for around three years until she ended up leaving him in the early 1990s. And the crazy thing about it is right around the time that Cassie ended up leaving Screaming Jay Hawkins, his career started to pick up a little bit because his music started to be used in different movies. One of those movies was A Rage in Harlem, and Screaming Jay Hawkins was actually featured in this movie, singing his song, I Put a Spell on You. And of course, of course, Screamin' Jay Hawkins felt like he needed to share this good fortune with somebody, so he ended up marrying for a fourth time, and this was a woman that he met while he was in Japan. Uh, people really don't even know this lady's name. All they know is that she was a young Japanese woman, probably around 19, 20 years old. He brought her back to America, but when he got her here, he wouldn't let her talk to anybody, see anybody. He kept her shut up in a room because he said he did not want her to be Americanized because he said that American women didn't know how to act, didn't know how to listen, and so he basically would trap this girl up. Well, the Japanese girl ended up kind of going crazy and getting scared, and so she's like, you know, wanting to call her parents. Screaming Jay Hawkins gets scared to face this girl's parents because he probably had no business bringing her from Japan anyway, 
So after they've only been married for about two months, he takes this girl to his sister's house and basically tells his sister, hey, I want you guys to meet my new wife. I'll be right back. And then just leaves and goes on about his life and just leaves this uh, Japanese lady here with his sister. Even after this fourth marriage with this little Japanese woman did not work out, Screaming Jay Hawkins still felt like he wanted to share his time with someone else. And so he gets with a woman named Lee Angel. Yes, Lee Angel is back in the picture again. And right around here, I think it's like 1991, 1992, she's going to his gigs with him. He takes her out on dates. And he told her that when he got back from his show in France, they would have a big, huge wedding. Then he flew off to France to do his show. About a week into Screaming Jay Hawkins' tour in France, American newspapers as well as French newspapers printed out an article showing Screaming Jay Hawkins smiling beside his new French wife, a lady by the name of Colette. Lee Angel had been played again. And his new wife, Colette, allegedly she said that she truly loved Screaming Jay Hawkins, but I think he demanded too much of her and she just wasn't finna deal with that. And so she ended up divorcing him. And what Screaming Jay Hawkins should have did at this point was just basically retire and sit his tail down somewhere or if he didn't want to retire, he should have just focused on his music. But he just had to have a woman on his arm. And so while he was still in France, he ended up going to Paris and he ended up seeing this really beautiful young black girl hitchhiking down the street. And so the girl ended up getting in the car and her name was Monique. And I think Monique was maybe around 30 years old and Screaming Jay Hawkins was in his 60s. And the folks say that all of his karma from all the people that he had ever hurt, baby, he got it back with this one. Gossip claims Monique started beating Screaming Jay Hawkins senseless. There was one witness that said he saw them walking down the street and they were arguing. And so um, after they're done arguing, Screaming Jay Hawkins tried to turn away and walk away from Monique. That witness said he sat and watched as Monique sat up there with her arms folded and watched Screaming Jay Hawkins walk away, get a little far, and then she took off running after him and kind of just jumped on his back and kind of like took him down from the back and uh, Screaming Jay Hawkins fell and like bust his head on the curb. I think he was maybe 68, 69 years old around this time. Not only was she busting him upside the head, uh, rumor has it that she wouldn't let anybody come to see him. The folks say that Screaming Jay Hawkins ended up sneaking and calling calling his ex-wife Colette and telling her, I think I made a mistake marrying Monique. I'm scared of her. I need somebody to help me, get me away from her. I'm scared of her. And then he proceeded to ask Colette to come down when he had his next show. Well, baby, Colette comes down to his next show and child, she could have just stayed at home. Cause why come the folks say that her and Screaming Jay Hawkins was both shut up in his dressing room, holding on to each other for dear life as Monique and like 10 of her brothers or something like that, bust into the uh, dressing room and basically took all the food from in front of them. Y'all know that ain't fun. I'm so sorry. But y'all know like sometimes the club promoters and stuff be giving them food, little snacks to eat. Baby, the folks say Monique and her brothers came in and stole all that little food. And so Screaming Jay Hawkins was sitting up there hungry, didn't even have no food before he went out on set. And it's sad, but at the same time, you gotta wonder if it's karma. And then also, when we get to the very end, you really gonna be wondering if it's karma. And we're about to get to that now. So by the late 90s, Screaming Jay Hawkins is married to Monique and his career is up, but mostly down. However, in the year 1999, a married couple wants to shoot a documentary of Screaming Jay Hawkins. This was one of the last big things he did because a few months later, Screaming Jay Hawkins ended up having an aneurysm and passing away at the age of 70 years old. After his death, his estate was estimated somewhere like $100,000. And although, Screaming Jay Hawkins was rumored to have 90 children, and maybe he did have 90 children. Uh, rumor has it that he only had three or four, I think, that were legitimate children that he had by his wife, Anna Mae. And so his legitimate children were all called up to come and discuss the will so they could see how everything was going to break down. So they get there and they come into the lawyer's office and he opens up the will and he tells them, thank you guys so much for coming here today. We are here to discuss the will and the provisions that your father left each of you. And it looks like you will all be getting $1 each. Pat! 
petty, 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 petty. Baby, the folks say that he left his children one dollar each and left the bulk of the $100,000 to his second wife, Jenny, and then uh, left maybe $10,000 to a niece that they said nobody knew. Now listen, I don't want to go too hard because maybe his legitimate children did something to him that we don't know about. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they cussed their daddy out and pushed him off of a bridge and he survived or something. I don't know the reason why he left them children a dollar each. But um, allegedly they were devastated. You know what I'm saying? They were hurt that their father could do this to them. All I know is that we are at the end of this very, very messy and very, very scandalous video. This video did take a long time, but I was battling with the Sarah Vaughn story. So anyways, I'll be out with another one soon, which I guess is gonna be Sarah Vaughn. Um, tell me in the comments, matter of fact, let's do this. Tell me in the comments. Do y'all want a Sarah Vaughn bio next or do y'all want a video with more scandal? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, love you guys so much. Again, like the video subscribe follow me on facebook instagram uh tiktok all platforms bye y'all